What's going on, y'all? So listen. What's going on, y'all? So we back again for another episode of Sister Season 5, Episode 15. Two could play that game. And let me just say... This episode annoyed me, and then the people that were supposed to annoy me didn't even annoy me, but the people that wasn't supposed to annoy me annoyed me. Like, what's up with that, okay? And then the way that they ended it, girl, Tyler, get some writers, okay? I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. Tyler, please get women writers, especially black women writers, all right, at this point, because... This is not, no, no sir -ry. Let's just go there because y'all already know what I'm about to go to. Danny and Preston, we just gonna go it like that, okay? Danny and Preston, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it because it just makes no sense. Now, we was having a discussion in the comments last week about how long they been together and wasn't she and Preston together just as long as Fatima and um Zach were together. It's a possibility that they were, but we have to remember that they took time off. And even in that time that they started getting together, they never really was official official because they never could really get it together. You know what I'm saying? So... You're forcing, you're, 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 you're rushing a relationship to fix some issues, to mask the issues. That's what it is. Not to fix your issues, but to mask them. And I don't like that. Preston asked him, um, Danny to get married or whatever. And I'm sitting here like, you've been back in her life for the past, what, couple of days now? And now you want to get married to her? Granted, he already had that ring, okay? You know, of course, Danny feels as though the ring was for some the other lady or whatever because, you know, most likely it wouldn't be her ring size. And then he was like, I trust me, put it on. It'd be your ring size or whatever. And my whole thing about this whole situation was you want somebody to marry you. Now, let me tell you something. Some of y'all women may like that, but a woman like me, and maybe others who think like me, we don't like stuff like that. Granted, I'm I'm gay as all ever, but if somebody was to propose to me or, you know, after we just got through talking and getting into it or whatever, and we barely been talking and barely been on the same page, can barely get on the same page, don't think that having getting down on one knee and proposing to me is going to be a solution to make me say yes. And then we'll work on our issue before we get married or work on our issue when we get No, the issue still going to be there. How about we work on getting to know who each other are? Okay, because at the end of the day, Preston and Danny still do not know who each other are. Okay, they don't know who they are. You know what I'm saying? They don't know that much about each other and you up here talking about something, let's get married. Yes, I know people get married two months in it, um, into it or less or, you know, three, six months, whatever. But they still got to learn each other. And baby, I don't want to uh, be trying to learn the basics. You know, you learning about your mate as you go throughout your life. But baby, by the time I get married to you, I want to know the basics about you already. I don't want to know. I don't want to have to wait till I get married to know what your favorite color is. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to have to wait uh, until we get married to learn that, you know, you graduated at this time and not this time. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to know the, I want to know the basics before all of that, you know? And as we see, Danny and Preston don't even have conversations like that. At least they don't show us. All right. And you want to sit here and propose to her for what? And then what really got me going again was when he said, because daddy kept on saying, no, no, no. And I don't like it. When, and that's what Preston's problem is. He can't take no. He's trying to convince her, kind of kind of like trying to force her to say yes. Well, if you don't say yes, uh, well, I'm going to stay down here until you say yes. Girl. Preston, get your ass up and go home, okay? Go home. And then this what would have been it for me. Now, Danny, I, I get it that you finally told that man that you love him or whatever. Love is blind. Y'all know what I say. It'll take over your man. But at the same time, girl, you got some sense. Now, I know you're not that desperate for a man where all these men is climbing up on you and coming to you or whatever. Because ain't no way in heck I'm finna sit here and allow somebody to tell me not once, not twice, but what is it? Three times? That, what, I'm finna go marry somebody else if you don't do this? Do you want me to go marry somebody else? Or you want me to go marry the, um, the other girl? And I said, what? 
You trying to get me to come to your side and you trying to get me to say yes and you going to say some, so what, you want me to just go ahead and marry, so I should just go ahead and marry the other girl. I'm still sitting here waiting to say that, to hear Preston say, I was just playing, there really is no other person. But he has yet to say that because I think there really is at this point. And I'm sitting here like, what is this? What self-respecting woman is still going to have a man or a woman, whoever they're with, still around after they keep on talking about something, they're going to be with somebody else if you don't be with me. Baby, if I'm not option number one and you can't wait on me, leave me alone. Leave me alone. If you rushing for whatever reason you rushing, leave us alone. Okay, go marry whoever the hell it is that you want to marry. All right, because baby, we not you're not forcing nothing over here, you know. And then he gonna say some. Oh, uh -huh, I know what it is. You're high. Okay, I stupid me. I'm sitting here talking to you while you high. We'll talk about this when you uh, sober up. And I'm sitting here like, ain't no sobering up. She's very coherent. She don't want to get married to you, sir. So he go in her room. And, and, and all that. Let me tell you something, Danny. I would have told him to go. I would have told him to go. Now, Preston, I like you. I like the character Preston, but they got him real immature. -ish. You know, they got all the men on here acting immature -ish all ever. And this was some immature stuff. Then he had to go up in there and call Sabrina. Okay? Like, mama was trying to go take a shower. He said, we can go up in there. She said, listen, I'm trying to take a bath. Well, we can go up in there. I can take a bath with you. No, can I breathe? I know you just came back in the picture, but can you get up off my click right quick, okay? I need to breathe, all right? Like, let me come down. He said, I was up in a small bed. I can be up in a small uh, tub with you. You know, we did it before. I said, Preston, stop. Why are they... This is what's making me mad because I see what's going on. Tyler is literally making the characters that I actually like, and I don't know why, but he's flipping them and making them unlikable. Like, why are you doing this to this man's character? He was one of the one decent men on the show that really had no real baggage and no real issues with him. And now you're forcing this stuff on his character to make it seem like he does. And, you know, he has some character flaws. And I'm like, why? Why? Okay. You know, and then the next morning when she wakes up to go to the, um, she got to work. You probably don't. You got money or whatever. And, you know, he said he'll probably, he'll, he'll see her at the airport because, you know, he finna go home. Okay, take your butt home because at this point, you know, um, it ain't finna happen right about now. And so he keeps on talking about Mindy, you know, and I'm like, Mindy? Oh, so now she got a name. Her name is Mindy. Okay, Danny asked, do you got any guy friends? She, he said a few. What did they say about the situation? Well, they told me I need to leave this situation alone and just go ahead and uh, marry Mindy, be with Mindy because, you know, she a good girl and she this and that. And I'm sitting here like, you're a grown man. You're a grown man. And I'm just, I'm just really like over it at this point. Like there is no real excuse for it anymore because it's not that you're not knowledgeable. I had to be with a black woman. At this point, you're acting like you're not knowledgeable how to be with women at all and how they function. Okay. You know, you don't ever bring up another woman when you're trying to get a woman. That's not appealing. That's not a turn on. That's not something that's going to make me say, oh, well, I'll take you before she do. No, because I'm not going to compete with nobody. Girl, I'm sitting here like, Preston, go home. Preston, please just go home. And then this whole scene with Danny and Q, cut it. I ain't even going to get into it. The whole force, I don't, I don't know what it is about Tyler that just likes to have the men on this show to just be so freaking annoyingly and cringingly persistent. Like, yeah, there's a certain level of persistence that you have to have or some people like or whatever, especially like when you get to know somebody, but you're doing it in a, in a respectable way. But then you got a person like Q who's just like, I don't even know you. You have on the ankle monitor. You are a liar and you are asking me to go back on drinks and you're basically trying to force your way into my house. He literally told Danny, can I come over to your crib? She said, I got a situation. No, he going to kick down a, um, you know, write down his number and going to say, go ahead and text me your uh, address. I said, what? 
And like he, for like a good minute, he just kept on trying to convince her to let him come over there to kick it at her house, to smoke, to drink, to just talk and be friends. No, no, no. Now, Tyler, I need you to go ahead and wake this up by saying, um, you know, letting Sabrina know who the freak he is to uh, uh, Danny. Okay, please let them say the name so she would know because it should not be this far in that she don't realize that this is the guy that set them up. Like, come on. So what you going to make it so that he either follows her home and force his way into her home and try to take advantage or whatever, or she, for some stupid reason, because she hasn't learned her lesson to just um go ahead and invite him because she's being desperate and pathetic. Like, what is it? You're turning... You're turning strong characters weak, and I don't like that, you know, because I see where this is headed. I see where this is headed. Anyway, and speaking of, you know, Sabrina, she was over at the house, and um, um, Calvin was over there with her, and, you know, he was just sitting there just having a little conversation with her. She didn't want him to go, you know, just wanted him, can you just hold me? <laughs> I said, all right, y'all sure that's all you want? <laughs> she said, you know, he was like, come on, let's go in the back. Let's go ahead and get you some sleep. She's worried about Maurice, okay? She's worried about Maurice and, you know, trying to help him. And at one point in time, Maurice did call, um, you know, and he got to hear from her. And she said, I'm going to get Andy to help. I'm going to try to get Andy to help. He talked about some. What can she do? Baby, she a lawyer. So they did have to tell him, you know, about the prosecutor and his little vendetta that he got against, um, you know, Andy. So there's that. Um, You know, Sabrina did tell Calvin she appreciate the fact that he... You know, kept it in calm, kept it in cool, kept his cool or whatever when Bio came over there being disrespectful. But, um, yeah, where Bio at? Why Bio can't get the money? Okay, like, Andy, you know, Sabrina needs to go to hook up with Andy and tell Andy, um, you know, Bio got a whole bunch of money. Okay, so, like, he needs some money, you know, to get people out or whatever, pay that money back to, uh... Uh, Andy, so Andy can give it back to, um, what's his name? Robin, because Robin out here finna go to a loan shark. Girl, we first see Andy. She in the bed in her lingerie, and she calling, she on the phone with Robin because Robin had called her and said, listen, girl, uh, I think I'm gonna need that number. She was like, all right, I'll text it to you in the morning. I'll give it to you in the morning. And I'm sitting here like, so it ain't in your phone? Or it's probably in something else, um, you know, that you just can't look up right now and text it to him or whatever. But okay, that's fine. They get to talking and, you know, flirting here and there. And then all of a sudden, um, talking about the whole situation, what's going on about getting forced out and how Gary is just, you know, being Gary and doing... Gary is literally doing all of this because he's jealous over a woman. Just like what Hayden going to say next week. You really trying to force somebody out there company over a woman? And he was like, no, I'm not doing this. I said, Gary, you're you're pathetic. You are pathetic and useless, okay? Because at the end of the day, Andy playing you. Andy wants you, but Andy ain't finna try to be in a relationship just yet because she keep on dangling it. She keep on dangling. And then he pops up, okay? He comes in from playing basketball and, you know, she heard, he heard everything that she said. She, he was out there listening. He was out there listening. And then going to call Hayden and tell Hayden, you know what? I think he knows. I think Andy knows. And Andy probably told Robin or whatever. Hayden don't care at this point because Hayden is finally finna get some ass. And he ain't had ass in I don't know how many years, okay? Probably Fatima was the last one. You know what I'm saying? And um, Miss Girl, Miss Girl called Fatima. Miss girl called Fatima while Fatima was up in Andy's office, right? <laughs> and she said, listen, I got him right where I want him. You know, he ain't even want to leave this morning. I'm seeing him tomorrow, uh, later on tonight. He kept on talking about how, you know, him and this guy named Gary about to force, um, you know, uh, the boss of some hedge fund or whatever out. And he about to be the owner and, and a new person in control and all this stuff. And then talking about how he trying to get this dude, Zach, uh, break him or whatever because he, um, he tried to get his ex or he got with his ex and the ex still in love with him and all this stuff. Talking about Fatima. Baby, I'm sitting here like, girl, 
Hayden is a liar. And then when she went further and said, also, he put socks up in his pants to make his penis look bigger than what it is. I said, sounds about right. Sounds about right. You know, Andy had a little caution, like, don't you think you're doing a little much? I said, she ain't really doing enough. I said, Andy, be glad that this is the scheme that she came up with instead of just taking that man out, okay? Because you know that could happen as well. You know, while they was in there talking, they was talking about uh, the whole situation with them um, meeting up, you know, how did that go? And she felt good about it. You know, how did Karen feel? And she was like, Karen, okay, and all this stuff, and woo, woo, woo. I said, yeah, okay, we'll see. You know, Zach... Did I missing somebody? Andy did go over there and talk to um, what's his name, Robin. You know, talk gave him the number to the loan shark that she so he can get that money or whatever, and then tried to ask her for a favor about Maurice to at least get her to be able to go in and see him. Okay. Robin is tired. Robin is tired. Robin, as soon as she said, I got one more favor for you. He said, listen, I ain't got no more money. Okay. I ain't got no more money. She said, listen, it ain't that. It ain't that. I need you to try to get some bail or I need you to be able to let me get in there to see Maurice. Um, I'm tired of the cat and mouse thing game right about now. I need some real action to happen. Okay. Real action to happen. Action Jackson. That's what I need. I need to be like, oh, each and every episode throughout the whole hour or the whole 40 minutes. That's minus the commercials. You know what I'm saying? I just need to be... Because right about now, y'all slacking. This felt like a filler episode. That's why this review about to be a little bit short. Okay? Um, But... What wound up happening? Zach, he was supposed to be getting ready to go down there to meet the lawyers or whatever. You know, to get this situation done with... Um, he can't get in contact with Heather, you know, Fatima did tell, uh, Miss, uh, Tamara or whatever to get, um, Hayden to start talking about Heather and then to try to get him to drop her as a client. I said, I don't know how that's going to work, but Miss Tamara said, I give me a week, give me a week and we'll see. And so, you know, Zach had pulled up some papers, had some papers drawn up by his lawyer, whatever, so that, you know, um, he can go give it to Karen so that she can go look at it, have her lawyer, who was Andy, look at it, and then sign it if they think that it's appropriate. Okay, fine. He asked for team, you don't want to come with me? She was like, no, nah, it's cool. You can go ahead. And she, he was like, you sure? You okay with that? He said. Uh, she said, yeah. Go ahead and do what you got to do, boo. And, oh, yeah, Fatima is wearing her, her ring now, okay? And I said, okay, that's cute. So, Zach goes down there to Karen's shop, and, you know, he got his little suit on or whatever, and he got his little briefcase. And, you know, he looking real professional and everything. And so, you know, uh, he wanted to talk to Karen right there and there. Karen said, let's go back there to the room. And she, he was like, why? Girl, just, let's, let, let's just go back there to the back. I said, all right. You know, I would have been with Zach. You know, granted, you don't want people all up in your business. But then again, people still going to be up in your business. But um, they went to the office. Pam said, don't be doing nothing back there. I said the same thing, you know, um, because, you know, history repeats itself. And you just never know um, if those walls can talk. You know what I'm saying? They will say a lot. And so they go back there. He pulled out the papers, give her the papers for the uh, baby or whatever. The, the uh, what is it? Child support stuff and all that. And she didn't, but she barely looked at it. She just got a pen and started signing. He was like, wait a minute. You can't do that. You can't do that. You got to get your lawyer. You got to let Andy look at it. Now, I appreciate him trying to be on the up and up and make it seem like, you know, he want to do this in a legal and a professional way. But if a person want to sign it and, and sign some papers or whatever, and they don't want no lawyer present and they feel like they okay with it, baby, just let them sign that shit and you get the hell up out of there. Okay. I would have just let her sign it. All right. You know, at this particular point, just let her sign it. I said, Zach, go. Quit all this protesting. And, and, and she was like, okay, fine. I'll get Andy to look at it, you know. And I'm just like, Ugh. wouldn't it have been me? 
Okay, and it wouldn't be me up in there trying to get nobody to sign no uh no no documentation about no child support when I'm not 100% sure. Baby, we need to get a DNA test, not an ultrasound test, not a um let's do the math type of test. Baby, I need a scientifically foolproof 99.9% .9 DNA test that says that baby that baby is mass, okay? Before we pull up any documents to sign, all right? And I feel like it's going to bite him in the butt. Because it's going to come back saying that that baby is not his. And yet he going to probably still have to be responsible for it. Please don't sign your name on the birth certificate. And truth be told, it probably ain't even going to be no baby. Because listen, Karen still ain't showing. We still don't even know how many goddamn weeks she is. Okay? Because I don't even think she a month yet. At this point, that's how long it's been. I don't know if she a month, a few weeks, or what. Like, girl, they ain't even tell us. And if they did, it's been so long ago. I don't remember. If they put it down there in the comments, if y'all know how many weeks or months she is, okay? Because mama's still just as thin. And I know it's be some thin people that have a little bump sometimes. You know, maybe they love a six-month butt look like probably a four or three month because they so small and skinny. But, girl, you ain't even got a little pudge. You still wearing form-fitting clothes. You know, your waist still there, you know? And I'm just like... Mm -hmm. Hurry this up, Tyler. Okay, hurry this up. We tired of this. I will say I appreciate the fact that, you know, she claimed that she moved on. You know, that her mama in them letters, it worked or whatever. And she just letting go and, you know, she got to let this stuff go and got to move on and all this or whatever. Okay, that's fine. And when they came up out that um, room... You know, he was about to go. They had all smiles on their faces and everything. And then she was like, ah, 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 you know. And he was like, and so he came over there, gave her a hug. I said, oh, wait a minute. This is starts different from where we've been. I'll take it because at this point, we feel like we're in a civil place and we're finally moving forward, right? She kissed him on the cheek. Not a sexual kiss. Uh, uh, it felt more so like a goodbye closure kiss. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's it. Nothing sexual, nothing harmful about it. Why at the end of this episode, Fatima is in her office minding her business. And here come Big Titty Angela. Okay, her friend. Um, Come up in there. And she said, so uh, let me ask you this question. And Fatima was like, yeah, girl, what's going on? She was like, everything good with you and Zach? And she was like, yeah, what's, why you ask that? She was like, nah, don't get mad at me because I'm just the messenger. But um, look at this. It was a picture. Girl, what was that? Mm -mm. It was a picture. Somebody had snapped. Somebody snapped a picture of Zach and Karen hugging each other. And then that from the angle that it got... You could see Karen, you know, kiss Zach on the cheek. But I guess from the angle, from the way that the the the, the picture was snapped, it kind of looked probably looked like, you know, um, Karen was actually kissing him on the lips. Cause that's why she started to get upset. I'm sitting here like, <sighs> really, Tyler. So you try to close out the drama between Karen and Zach with Karen being so obsessive. Making it so that you and so Fatima and Zach can finally move on in peace and harmony and happiness, right? You know? <laughs> Andy had asked her, so how you so calm about all of this? Because, you know, how you feel about the baby being his? She said, the baby his? What can I do about it? You know, why am I going to be upset when it happened before me? You know what I'm saying? And she was like, okay, cool, 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 cool. I just don't know if I wouldn't do, I would be able to do it. She said, if it was Gary, look at what you're doing now. You would be doing the same thing. And I said, sure enough, Andy, you ain't going to let that man go. Because look at all the stuff that you've been going through with him. She was like, you got me on that one. But... I'm sitting here like, so why would you throw this monkey wrench in the plan? I mean, I know we want drama, but drama that made sense. And this don't make sense. This is unnecessary. This is totally unnecessary. And so next week, Fatima finna be all up in her feelings. She finna be showing Andy. Andy trying to say it's an old picture. No, it's not an old picture. It's because this is what he had on when he left today to go see her and all this stuff. And I'm sitting here like, so now you don't trust your man. 
After all of this, you don't trust your man and you really think that this is what was going on or you that foolish. You're that foolish. Let me just say this. I finished the last two episodes. I finally finished season one as a team of, uh, when I was over there at my mama house, right? And I'm going to say this. Terrible. Y'all hyped that shit up and I really didn't like it. I really didn't like it because it's just too much. It's just too much. I'm just going to be 100% honest. I like Zach and Fatima as a couple. I don't like the way that it's written for their characters to have so much drama. Can we have some peace? Can we have at least one friend that is on the up and up on each side? Fatima ain't got no real friends because Angela, regardless of the fact that, you know, she ain't as messy, she this is dumb. She ditzy and she dumb as all ever. Because why would you send that lady that picture on here? You know, and she acts stupid on there too. Your man gay. <laughs> she was like, you know what? Um, He do got all gay friends. <laughs> girl what okay and then to have zach friends both of his friends being dumb being dumb and wanting him to be the same way like them and i don't like it when and it happened in real life too though that people be having friends that don't want to see them grow up they want to stay in the same stupid mind frame that they were in high school or college or whatever and they don't want to grow up and then they get upset at you for moving on and being an adult okay i don't like that that's what zach's friends were okay and i don't know the brother situation with the brother it's like y'all just throwing drama and drama and drama Everywhere, the, the girl across the next door, you know, they like, what is the purpose? Can they have some, some, you can have a good show without it being heavily filled with unnecessary drama every scene. And that's exactly what it is. It's been what, eight episodes and about, if you put it all combined together, let's say it's probably one episode full of peace and harmony and then seven episodes full of drama like that i don't like that okay um this is why you need writers you need a writer's room all right you need writers who have experienced things you need writers who are women on a show that is about sisterhood tyler perry what the f do you know about black women and sisterhood you are not a black woman i'm sorry to go there i'm sorry to go there i'm sorry to go there and it's not me being mean it's just I like Tyler Perry, and I like a lot of his stuff. I check it out. I make sure to support when I can, but I am not one of those blind fans or whoever that's just going to sit back and just take it. No, I want to tell my people, listen, you got to do this better or whatever, so they can take that critique and listen to it. But you don't want to fucking listen to it. And I'm not the only one that's saying this stuff. But hey. I'm sorry. It just got real, real at the end. Um, Cause I be wanting my, I want my people to do better. Cause I want to support y'all 100%, 100%. You know, ain't nobody perfect, but when you have that opportunity to actually do better and you refuse to do better, it gets frustrating. Anyway, y'all that's sisters. And if I miss some stuff, girl, I don't care. Hopefully next week's episode will be better. Okay. And um I don't know. I really did just go off. I really did just go off. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. But anyway, y'all tell me how y'all feel. I don't know how y'all feel about that rent, but hey, it is what it is. Y'all know that's what y'all come for me for to be to be real with y'all. Y'all tell me how y'all feel in the comments and we'll talk about it. And I'll see y'all later. It is hot in here. That's because it's warm outside and I got this heat up. Girl, get the hell. I'll see y'all later. Peace.